What other are some other examples of wealth destroying moves you try to help clients avoid? Um, I would start with, it seems obvious and cliche, but I've seen it not happen enough is um, please button up the trust and estate plan. Huh. And not, not just the paperwork, but the communication and understanding what goes into it. The paperwork is just the first step, but it's as simple as funding your trust and, and not funding your trust. And, you know, if there is a, a big pile of cash that goes to, again, a spouse or a partner or children, what is the education or lack thereof from that individual or those multiple individuals? How much power do they have in, in future decisions? And so I would just say just the first step of the transition from trust and estate planning to the education yep. to that very first level I've seen. And, um, and before we go on with this, I'll just emphasize that, that trust and estates one, you got to have a will, okay? And, and often a will today incorporates or makes reference to a revocable trust. Not an irrevocable, but a revocable trust that can be revoked. Um, and that trust, many estate planning attorneys will create it for you and say, here it is, put everything in it, and then they say goodbye after you pay them their bill. Uh, sorry, I hope there are no estate planning attorneys or anything, but that's not the whole job. You have to retitle your house, if that's one of those entities. You have to retitle your Merrill Lynch account. Those things are, pardon my language, a bitch. They're hard to do. That's what you have to do, though. That, that's a small part of what, of what Isaac was talking about. You have to get it all done. So anyway, other comments? On this? I just want to say, as a tax attorney, this warms my heart. It, our propaganda is working. Yeah, yeah, I'm brainwashed. Uh, uh, pardon me, you're a tax attorney. You don't have a heart. There's no such thing. <laughs> just kidding, I'm just kidding. Just kidding. It's a low blow, but fair. <laughs> um, we, we, we leave that behind at law school, actually. They, they can, right. yeah, they, they confiscate. Uh, third year, I think third year they yeah, take third it. Third year, they, they pull it right out of you. Yeah. Uh, no, I just want to add one thing because, you know, tax hammer, I only see nails, and I'm glad that everyone's talking about tax erosion. We call it tax decay. But another thing, so the first client, I, I spent seven years at J.P. Morgan. The first client I ever worked on at J.P. Morgan when I first started working there was worth $60 million after he sold his business. And then by the time he left, he was worth 20. And what got him, and I've seen so many other clients fall into the same trap, is that they compare themselves to their friends and the people in their network. And you don't know that the person who sits next to you at the country club has a trust that funds all their business ventures, whereas you don't. You don't know that someone else is actually taking the risk in so-and-so's company and, and, and they aren't in yours, right? So don't compare yourself to the Joneses. Don't, com you know, don't look over the fence, probably speaking. That's something that we see a lot of people just trying to keep up. I actually love that. Very general wealth-destroying tactic is to try to keep up with everyone else, or someone else, anyway. Did you have a point to add to that? This seems kind of like a no-brainer, but um, excessive use of leverage can be a massive wealth destroyer. And watching some entrepreneurs go through the global financial crisis, um, you know, I saw firsthand what over leverage can do to, you know, an entrepreneur that, you know, thinks they've got it under control and. Good point. Good point. Dan, you got a comment to add to this? Sure. I often see two issues that are actually in common with one another. One is overconfidence uh, related to then lack of diversification. So we've seen a common case out there like um, being raised in Alaska, one of the most successful bankers in Alaska, retired with his tens of millions, went down to Florida, decided to create, since he was so... Uh, so successful as an entrepreneur in one area, he was confident he could do it in the ice cream business. Of course, in Hawaii, everybody's going to want ice cream. He then uh, created a number of different ice cream shops around Hawaii and lost his entire fortune. And we went and visited him there in uh, Hawaii um, a few years ago, literally about a week before he, he died. And uh, he was literally penniless at that point in time. And so the, that overconfidence can then result in a lack of diversification. Harry Markowitz won the Nobel Prize in 1990 for finding that the most important factor in seeing growth over the decades is asset allocation. Not just being diversified in different areas, but with that reverse correlation of different asset classes. And so 
Um, oftentimes you've heard people make their money through concentration, but they also can lose their money through concentration later on. And so we encourage asset allocation through diversification, through reverse correlation. Perfect, perfect. I love it, I love it. Also, don't buy horses, please. Uh, just one, one thought, all these are, are probably the most common. One thing that we have seen in our space is failure to include a spouse oh. early and often, yeah. right? So we unfortunately had a, a situation where a spouse uh, caught, a, you know, caught a disease and, and passed very quickly. The, the wife had not been included uh, on the meetings. He was just taking care of everything. <clears throat> Next thing you know, the, you know, the money starts going out. The yacht was bought, the house in Hawaii, and it was going the wrong way. And, and the relationship wasn't there because it hadn't. And, and we know we tried to invite and, and try to do our part, but he's like, I got it. So failure to include a spouse in those decisions early and often, I think, can lead to challenges. And I would extend that further. I think, Isaac, you maybe kind of hinted at this earlier, to, to grown members of, of your family with regard to the assets that are in the trust or, or maybe coming their way later on. Because they don't want surprises either. Uh, you know, uh, when, when, the, when the lawyer comes in to read the will and, 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 and you know, the money isn't there or something like that, you know, you need to engage them too. But you have to right, spouses, we have a whole team of people, mostly women, uh, who focus on divorcing females uh, as clients because they, they, they have not been engaged. Um, they, uh, you know, and, and that is to the fault of the very strong-willed, you know, huge wealth-creating guy, you know, but, but involve that woman. Uh, involve the husband if it's the other way around. Get them both involved, very important. To listen to this full panel, join the Family Office Club by visiting familyoffices.com. We look forward to seeing you at our next live event.